Hi class, I have a tutorial for you on how to search the library's databases. So in the previous instruction uh, se section, I talked about uh, what this box here, OneSearch, searches. And we decided that it searches way too many things that um, are just going to end up giving us a lot of garbage in our search results. So I want to show you a way to hone and refine the actual databases that you end up searching. So from southalabama.edu forward slash departments forward slash library, you will get to the University of South Alabama um, homepage or library homepage. As a matter of fact, from any of South's pay web sites. There's a menu at the top of all of them and on the right hand side there's one that says libraries and if you should find yourself having to click on this link libraries and then you'll click on the Marks Library which is the main library the one with Starbucks in it if you need to uh, know about that. So to select the actual databases I want to show you how to search today. We will go under here under quick links I'm sorry, we'll go under Library Resources and click on Databases and eReference. This is a long alphabetical list of all the databases and eReference resources that we subscribe to. It's a very, very long list. I want you to click on the E in the alphabetical list here, and then once the E's come up, we're going to go into EBSCOhost. So we'll click on EBSCOhost. So EBSCOhost is an interface that allows us to select several databases um, and search them all at one time. So we need to choose the databases that we think are going to have the information that we need. So in Academic Search Complete is a large multidisciplinary full text databases. It says here it has 8,500 full text periodicals and 7,300 are peer reviewed, which is what you want. So that sounds like a good database to be searching in. We'll click on Academic Search Complete. Normally we do not use newspapers and news wires when we're doing um, uh, reviews of the literature. There are some special cases that you need to check with your professor if you think that you need one of those. If you are, uh, one of your subject areas is in business, you could click the business source complete. Notice that all of the databases have a little blurb that explain what kind of information is in them. Sometimes you can read the title of the database, Communication and Mass Media Complete pretty much says what's going to be in that database. You may want to click on that one and search it. If you are searching in an, on an education topic, Education Research Complete is where you need to be. Professional Development, I'm not going to read all of these to you, but if you're doing something along the lines of um, psychology, maybe social uh, sociology or history, you can select those databases. And we can scroll all the way down if you are interested in some kind of sports management um, research. This sport discus with full text, see, says for sports and sports medicine journals. That's a good database to select. CINAHL is the our largest nursing uh, database, and it's a very, very large database, so you're, if you're interested in searching for something along the lines of nursing and allied health literature, so nursing, emergency medical services, that kind of thing, you would want to click on the CINAHL uh, complete database. So you'll go through and read the databases, descriptions, and then um, go back up to the top, or you can go all the way down at the bottom and click on continue. Once you've done that, we've, we're given these fancy search boxes. See, now we have three search boxes. We're in the advanced search mode. Right here, we have some a Boolean uh, selector. So we could say and, or, and not. 
all in caps. Remember, those are the Boolean search terms I talked about earlier. So we could start to uh, construct our um, keyword searches using these search boxes. If you can't remember what databases you have uh, signed uh, clicked, at any point you can go and click on Choose Databases, and then you get this sort of little comprehensive list of all the databases and the ones with check marks in them are the ones that you have already selected. So I'll just click on OK to get rid of that. So that was from right there, Choose Databases. So let's go ahead and um, conduct a search on um, social presence and um, learning. And maybe I even want to go down here and do an OR um, education. Okay, so I um, and my topic, my um, topic here is I'm interested in the relationship between social presence, which is a communication construct, and what it has to do with learning and education. And then we can click on search. So look how many search results we had. And I know right now you're saying, oh, but Angela, you said that using Boolean searching would narrow the amount of things that uh, results that we would get back. Well, hold on. There are still some uh, changes that we can make, some limiters that we can set up here that will reduce the number of results in this um, result list. Over here on the left hand side there's a column that says refine results. So for one thing we know we want to refine the results to scholarly peer-reviewed journals. So just put a check, check mark there and it cut out quite a lot of the results. And look at the earliest publication date on this goes back to 1880. That's way too old. I need some new articles on social presence. Um, you check with your professor. Generally it's between you looking for articles that are not older than six to ten years. So if you put your mouse pointer on this double arrow bar hold down the left mouse button and then you can drag this slider all the way over here to, um, uh, we'll go to 2000. And so I, it cut out a lot of the result list. It's, there's still a lot of um, information here, but remember what I said in the earlier part of the tutorial where I said um, if we use Boolean searching the search results will be presented in sort of a relevancy ranking manner. So the first few articles, the first few pages of articles, probably have social presence, keyword, learning, or education in the title. And you can see here they've even highlighted, sort of bolded the words social presence, learning, and education in the title for me. So the way that I would go through looking through these articles is I would read the title and then skim or read the abstract, which is this information here, which is sort of an executive summary of what the article is about. I can see who wrote the article and I can see what journal the article was published in along with the volume. I can see how many pages it is. I can see who the publisher of the journal is. So maybe I'll decide that I want to um, come back and read this journal. Right now I could go ahead and click on this little plus sign on this folder and it'll put it in this folder up here. So right now if I click plus sign you can see that folder is now open. So I could go through um, the results of this search, reading titles, reading abstracts, and then just putting articles in that folder in this browser bar. And so that way I don't have to read everything right away. I can sort of 
sift through the ones that have something to um, do with the research that I'm doing. Maybe I don't care about students' perceptions. Maybe I only want to learn about social presence theory and I want something to, maybe I don't want anything to do with games, so I'm not going to put that one in my folder. So you would go through these search results. And the way you want to approach looking at the search results is down here at the bottom, there are some other subjects that sometimes offer good synonyms that you could search on in your next round of searching. So we almost never do just uh, one round of searching. You search and then you tweak your keywords and then you, based on what you're reading in the abstract until you find a good set of keywords and synonyms that are producing a lot of results that are relevant to your research. So if I read the centrality of social presence in online teaching and learning in social work, so here are some subjects down here, the internet, learning strategies. Maybe I could incorporate learning strategies into my keyword search if that's what I'm uh, thinking about. Maybe I'm just really thinking about social work education, how to educate those who are going to become social workers. If I click on this actual title, I get some publication information about this article. So here is more, the authors are here, the address of the publisher of the journal. It's published by Taylor and Francis in the United Kingdom. Look, here are some, some key words. So now I'm really getting some good information and I haven't even started to read the article. Um, I can use these keywords and add them, go back up and refine my search or conduct another search. I can find out all kinds of information about the publication of this journal. There are some tools on the right hand side. I could remove this article from the folder that I put it in up here. If you click on print or email or save or export, export that just export saves emails this publication record not the entire article. You have to be reading or looking at the entire article in order to export it or print it or save the entire article. I just want to talk to you a little bit more about the tools on the right hand side. You may notice that I skipped over this one that says Cite. Uh, you have to provide a reference list for your annotated bibliography or I'm sorry for your um, some of your assignments. So if you click on site, this box pops up in the middle and it offers me some variations of citation. So A, B, and T. This is the American Medical Association. I think that um, after talking to your professor that you guys will be using APA. If so, here is a version of the APA style citation. Now, a word of caution about using these citations. Um, EBSCOhost does not bother with making sure the citation is properly formatted. Um, most of the information here is correctly formatted, but not all of it. There are some errors. If you were to copy and paste this uh, APA citation into your reference list, it would be wrong and you would get marked off. So you want to make sure that you either use the blue book, the APA style manual, or the MLA, whichever citation format you're using, or go to the OWL, the online writing lab at Purdue, which is on the internet, and um, learn how to write a correct APA style citation. I'll uh, probably put up a tutorial with a little bit more information about that at a later date. I just wanted to show you these tools here. So we can click on the X to close that box. Um, right here, if you are putting articles in a folder and you want to save, which indicates that it's a kind of a, it's a saving place, it's like a little workspace that EBSCOhost gives to you. If you click on Create Note, you could create a note here and say uh, something like, I will use this to make a point about blah, 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 
in the introduction. So once you start reading these articles and um, uh, seeing how you can use them in your research, you can make these little notes, these little electronic notes. What you're really doing here is like an electronic uh, notes card, maybe that you did in, in high school. You had to turn in index cards to your teacher. And so think of this uh, create note as an electronic index card. Okay, we need to talk about the folder, the EBSCOhost folders. So right now, I've put some articles in the folder, but if I were to close this browser session, the um, all the articles I put in the folder would disappear. So what you need to do is get a folder account by clicking on Sign In. And when you click on Sign In, I already have an account. You will click on Create a New Account fill out this short form, save the changes, and then all the articles that you put into your folder will be saved. So this is a good way to um, conduct some searches on the fly or on your lunch break and put the articles in a folder and then maybe you have to go back to work or you know go pick up your grandma at the grocery store or at the hairdresser and so you're just saving the articles into a folder. You can come back to them later. But do make sure that you always sign in when you're putting articles in the folders. Okay, so let's go back to the result list. And I'm going to look at this article here, Social Presence and Interaction in Learning Environments, the Effect on Student Success. Uh, I can see right here that it's offering me a PDF full text. I click on it. Again, I get the publication information and I get a link right here to a PDF full text, which I can go ahead and read right on my computer. When you are reading, find an article that you like. Make sure that you go all the way down to the bottom of the article and take a look at the references that this author has cited. You may find some articles in this list that would be useful to your research. So don't forget to mine this article, like we call this citation mining in Library World, but read these articles, read this list of articles, these references, and see if any of the titles seem like they might be interesting to you. If you want, for instance, if I wanted to grab this one, Personal Learning Environments, the Future of E-Learning. I can highlight it and hit Control C to copy it. And now I can go to the library's homepage. And now I can use OneSearch and click on Title. See, I'm only, I'm using OneSearch because I know what I'm searching for. And click on search. Now we don't own that article. Um, we don't have access to that article, but me, most of the time you will find that you do have access to the articles listed in these reference lists. Let's go back to the result list and remember that as you're looking through the result list, you're going to be looking at the subjects. When you're clicking on articles, you'll be looking for keywords along with subjects and um, trying to find some more synonyms that you could search on to refine your searching. Okay, I think we're going to have to take a little break. Um, and I'll be back in the next session section to tell you a little bit more about um, the EBSCOhost folders. I'll, I'll go ahead and do a tutorial on that for you. All right, one more section. We're just about done.